Over the past two years, I have visited the Salton Sea test base several times and have come to realize that the remnants of this base represent an important part of our nation's development. Many of the foundations of the test base are slowly being buried by the moving sands of the Southern California desert. Because this was a top secret facility, very little is published about what went on there and how this location contributed to our country's success in the world in the 1950s and 60s. The development of a nuclear arsenal is not something people talk about much, but it represents so many parts of our development as a society and contains the good, the bad, and the ugly of who we were then and who we are now. This small secret base housed the most advanced photographic, radar, radio telemetry, and aerospace data collection equipment in the world. It was a hub of innovation. It tells a story of national survival, innovation, industrial war development, technological development, and ultimately the development of who we are today as a nation. Hi, I'm Bill Berry, and welcome to my Desert Adventures. On August 6th and 9th, 1945, the United States of America dropped atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, killing more than 120,000 people. Robert Oppenheimer was the director of the Manhattan Project and the development of the first atomic bombs. We knew the world would not be the same Few people laughed, few people cried, most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds I suppose we all thought that one way or another the consequences of this act would result in a huge proliferation of nuclear weapons and the ever-present fear of annihilation for four years, the United States maintained a monopoly on nuclear weapons and used this power to leverage and influence world politics. But, on August 29, 1949, that monopoly ended with the detonation of the Soviet Union's first atomic bomb at its nuclear test site in Kazakhstan. The Cold War was underway, and because of my curiosity about concrete pads at the southwest end of the Salton Sea, I discovered a lost history involving the process of researching and developing our nuclear arsenal and the contribution to that development at the Salton Sea test base just 10 miles south of Salton City, California. From June of 1946 to March of 1964, the Salton Sea test base was managed by Sandia Labs as a top secret facility for aeroballistic testing of nuclear bombs. It was the Area 51 of its time. The base averaged 150 test unit drops per year. This post-World War II top secret location was a classic example of the United States Industrial War Complex, which continually strove to develop and innovate the defensive and offensive capabilities of war. On this list of nuclear weapons developed by the United States, which is over 20 pages long, the first seven pages are the weapons tested by Sandia Labs at the Salton Sea test base. Today, this historic and top secret location is being slowly covered by the moving sands of the Colorado Desert. All but three of the dozens of structures which once made up this base are still standing. They give us a glimpse of that era. As part of hazardous materials cleanup requirements, most structures were completely leveled and removed, leaving only foundations to stir our imaginations. It's been difficult to find much information about the work that went on here. 
Whenever a nuclear weapon was built, stored, and then determined to be obsolete, the records of the work on that particular weapon, as well as the weapons themselves, were destroyed. I've been able to piece together some understanding of the work done on the test base through the study of base cleanup reports and other historic Sandia documents. Sandia Labs also did a short video about the process for tracking the aeroballistics of these weapons. That video was a breakthrough for me as it showed details of the main instrument laboratory. This screenshot from the video really got my attention when I saw these two power poles. I remembered seeing these same two power poles about two miles from the main base and realized the instrument lab was not at the main base but out in the field quite a ways away. The instrument lab is the main control point for all testing of shapes being dropped onto water or land targets. A network of range instrumentation feeds control and data information on all these tests to the range console from which control of all range operations is maintained. The control point maintains radio contact with Sandia Laboratory in Albuquerque, with range guards who maintain personnel and information security on the range, with each of the range instrumentation stations, and with the pilot of the aircraft delivering the test shapes. Today you can still see the data transmission lines that lead from each of the stations out in the field to the main instrument lab. The first time I found the foundations of the instrument lab, I did not know it was the actual instrument lab. Here's a discussion we had about the wires going into the facility. This is where the wires are coming up from over there. Come look at this over here. They come into this facility somehow. and they mu This must be the wires coming into some sort of a control room. Because look at it, all of them are coming up. That's the same, uh, almost the same amount of wires that are going down in the ground and coming up here. I marked all of the facilities I have found on this Google Earth map, and it also matches maps that I found in my research. You can see how all of these facilities are brought together by bringing transmission lines to the main instrument lab. The work going on here was absolutely amazing, from the development of cameras that were capable of tracking bombs being dropped at 30,000 feet, the improvement of radar, the, the use of radio telemetry. All of these innovations brought new technology to our world today through the efforts to try to develop nuclear weapons back in the 1950s and 60s. Population growth in the Imperial Valley and the popularity of the Salton Sea for recreation in the late 1950s became a concern for the Sandia National Laboratory executives. In 1961, Sandia Lab shut down all shape testing at the Salton Sea and relocated its equipment and personnel to its test site at Tonopah, Nevada. The Navy reclaimed the facility and the Department of Defense implemented the Joint Parachute Test Facility in 1963. We'll explore that in future episodes. The history of this area totally fascinates me. I think this area should be set aside as a historic park or monument because it represents a huge part of our history and it's something that shouldn't be lost. I'm looking forward to continuing my exploration of the Salton Sea test base. The entire area is remarkably beautiful and full of opportunities to explore and learn about the history of our nation during that era. Join me next time for another desert adventure.